Good thing I got off this freeway. Now we're seeing freeways jammed in both directions. Oh, look at this. Every one of those cars that's idling, you know, is actually causing more pollution than if it were driving at higher speeds per mile. And it, it operates less efficiently, efficiently, too. So all these cars, their engines are still turning, even though they're, they're hardly moving. Some of them are completely stopped. With an electric car, you stop and go driving is great because when you speed up, you basically store energy in motion from the batteries. Then when you slow down, the regenerative braking sucks that power right out of motion back into the batteries. So essentially, stop and go driving in an electric car is fun because you're not really using anything extra than if you were just driving along at 20 miles an hour. Because mostly the power that you put into moving, you regain when you uh, do your regenerative braking. So like right now, I'm doing regenerative braking, now I'm speeding up. And so we do this hundreds of times a day, sometimes thousands of times a day in an electric car. Yet General Motors says it can't be done because it would, you know, um, the volt would require that those batteries get charged and discharged hundreds of times a day. Well, what about this car? We don't even have an internal combustion engine on this car. Nothing at all, just batteries. Just charging the batteries and recharging them day, day after day, hundreds of times a day and still doing just fine and you know hardly having used any energy at all today so far this is some of the wilderness areas of los, An of los angeles this part of wilmington used to be bean fields in the old days now these are all polluted from a dump and now it's mostly industrial areas in the real old days this all used to be a wetland this used to be one of the most productive wetlands in california the entire los angeles basin was an alluvial so basically we're rolling along here, you know, this is kind of the way that uh, the most fun to drive is when you don't have to stop very much, <laughs> but now we have to stop here. And we see all, ooh, these dumps, these are, this is all the next dump here, in the Den Agajanian dump, and um, also formerly wetlands, and now nothing but oil wells and industrial areas. still smell the dump here so you know it's it's basically the um, the old um, ground that has been contaminated over the over the decades well, trying to get look at this traffic my gosh that's where we're gonna be back in in just a minute you know and that's what all those people stuck in that traffic there in a minute but meanwhile we're trying to find those those car dealers and they're stuck over by that refinery isn't that isn't that appropriate we see here huge lines of cars. Now we're going to have to wait for this guy. He's, he's sort of blocking the way. But that's okay. We have lots of time. No rush. But all these cars are spewing out. You know, their engines are turning. They're spewing out anhydrous nitrous, anhydrous sulfurous acid, which gets converted into the more destructive nitric and sulfuric acid when it hits when it gets mixed with ozone and sunlight and then when it hits water in the lungs it becomes really nitric acid and sulfuric acid and really eats up the lung tissue of kids and causes permanent lung damage studies have shown recently a USC study showed that children raised uh, a third of a mile from a freeway are um, significantly more susceptible to permanent lung damage than those raised a mile from the freeway. That doesn't mean that the ones from a mile from the freeway are immune, it just means that they have less permanent lung damage. Now, it's not the freeways, it's the cars on the freeways and it's the fact that the cars spew out gas. Some people said, well, what we really ought to do is change our urban design so we don't have anybody living near freeways. Well, there isn't any place in LA that's more than a mile from a freeway and we're all mixed in with these cars. The only way to avoid permanent lung damage for kids' lungs is to have cars that don't spew out nitric and, nice, and sulfuric acid. 
Well, we're still driving along looking for those car dealers now, but I mean, there's a lot of cars on that lot. I don't think there's one electric car over there. Yeah, I don't think there's one plug-in car on this whole road except this one. Uh-oh, now this guy just passed me, but he ran into the red light. Cool guy. That's okay, we're going to weasel over here. And look at all those cars, you know, endless, endless stream of cars. Everybody has a car, and all the people that live amongst those cars are suffering permanent lung damage from the nitric acid that, and sulfuric acid that comes out of the exhaust pipe. It's impossible to live amongst these cars and say that, you know, somehow we can not live amongst the cars. You cannot, you cannot live amongst the cars and say, well, we're going to live a mile from the freeway. Because wherever that smoke goes from the car exhaust, that's where the pollution goes. That's where the lungs get damaged. Those are the kids that have their aureoles in the lungs permanently destroyed by nitric acid. Those are the kids that say, Mommy, Mommy, I can't breathe. The next morning, the mommy takes them to the emergency room. It's $1,000. All that happens is they give them an inhaler and send them back out of the, to school so they can get their per diem, their per capita. But that child with that permanent lung damage is is not only was getting paid for by the the taxpayer it is not being paid for by the refineries now here again there's more car lots but not one of them Lincoln Mercury Ford not one of them is electric now Ford tried to take our electric truck away and and almost crushed it but fortunately Bill Ford stopped them from doing that and now look at all those cars, more cars, all out of the woodwork, cars all over the place, cars, cars, and again they're idling, you know, as the cars idle, waiting for, waiting to go, they're still burning gasoline and diesel, and it's going into the air. At least we don't have brake particles, but every time those cars come to a stop, those brake linings have a little tiny bit of wear. Some little bits of brake particles break off and land in the air and go on the ground. Now, they're supposedly asbestos free, but they are not free of heavy metals. Recent studies by Heal the Bay show that the biggest uh, contributor to the recondite problem of urban runoff is heavy metals from auto debris. The debris of cars. Cars spewing. And more cars coming down the road. Cars after cars. People live with cars. They can't live without them. 